Hello, hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your May 2018 overview reading. This is good for you if you are a sun, moon, or rising Sagittarius. If you don't know what that means, you can go look up a natal chart generator. I get a lot of questions about that. Um, just, just Google it, natal chart generator. Um, so I have really been enjoying the layout that I've been doing. This is going to be a little bit different because I am working with an animal uh, spirit guide deck this, um, this month. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. I, and with... I, I just want to give a little disclaimer as you're going through and, you know, listening to the reading, if there's an animal that is particularly um, powerful for you or that resonates really deeply, go, I mean, look up the animal because it might be giving you some information about, you know, some, some other things you have going on beyond my interpretation. So I would encourage you to kind of go rogue and look into that because there's a lot of symbolism uh, that goes along with uh, animals. So just pay attention because your own intuition is going to be communicating with you during this reading. Okay, and I'm just throwing down the timeline as usual. And I also... I decided to do a themed spread this month, so I'm going to be working with all animal um, and plant cards, um, aside from the oracle cards, but I thought that would be fun to do a, a theme. Okay, anyway, enough chit-chat. Let's get to it. Okay. So I have a truth bomb card for you. Just something to keep in mind this month. Bliss isn't something you work for. It's something you focus on, right? No, it's something you follow. That, that looked like focus on to me. Um, it's not something you work for. It's something you follow. Okay, that's definitely true. If you're giving things too much effort, then that takes away from the very essence of the thing that you're trying to cultivate. So make sure that you are just paying attention to, um, you know, uh, like, are you working really hard to achieve bliss? Because that, that kind of takes away from the bliss itself. And then here's another affirmation card for you. No judgment. I release myself from any and all judgments. I find my inner critic, call it into my office and tell it to take a vacation. As it leaves the room, I let out a sigh and begin to enjoy the joy of simply being. Who hired that guy anyway? <laughs> I love these cards. Um, so it, it it's really about releasing expectations. I'm seeing that as part of what the judgment is. If you're making judgments about people, places, things, situations, and circumstances, before they even have the opportunity to come to fruition, it makes it really challenging to um, enjoy yourself. Because then you're like, you're just writing the script already and there's no space for you to, um, you know, enjoy, enjoy the process at all. Okay, and so these are relationship cards that I'll pull at the end. Um, for if you're in partnership, if you're looking. Okay, so for Sagittarius, the central energy this month is the eight of feathers, courage, solutions, finding ways to like weasel your way out of situations in a good way, right? Like this is about adaptability. Um, you know, shifting with the circumstances, adjusting to things as they come up, finding that there are so many different possibilities and solutions. It doesn't always have to be so hard. And this coincides with the Eight of Swords. But the thing with the Eight of Swords is that a lot of it is a mindset. It's about what are you telling yourself mentally and how are you able to break free of those limiting beliefs, those things that are holding you back from what you really do want to make happen. Okay, so the more you navigate, the more you problem solve, the easier this month is going to be. Now, let's see what you're releasing this month. Crocodile. A lot of, I feel like there's been this energy looming around of waiting, 
Maybe it was the Mercury retrograde we had in April or whatever. Um, but this is, you know how crocodiles like wait or they just sit with their mouth open waiting for a bird to walk by. Um, so that's like what's shifting out is that contemplation, the, the waiting period, staying with your eyes open, just kind of watching things as they come about. Um, the waiting period is over and you're being asked to problem solve. You're being asked to find creative solutions to things that may have seemed intractable in the past. Let's see what the oncoming energy is. You have butterfly. This is emotional growth and transformation. So as you find yourself evolving with your... Um, you know, the the obstacles that pop up, it's going to give you new hope. You're uh, birthing new ideas and having revelations about what exactly you're doing in relationships and what that means for you. And so you're, you really are coming into a period of emotional health and freedom. Okay, so this is really nice to see because it's showing the transformation you watched, you waited, you problem solved, you're growing. Now you can stay here. You can stay and hang out with the crocodile and really sink into that and just wait and wait and wait. But you're going to need to work through this eight of feathers in order to get to the point where you're expanding. You've had your time in the cocoon. You have to do something about it now. This is what's guiding you. So this is more of the external, what you're seeing come up. Sea serpent, express yourself. This coincides with the second chakra. And what I am gathering here for you is primarily about what it is that you want to cultivate. What are you looking for in terms of um, expression and birthing into the world? Those are the things that you need to pay attention to. Um, and this is highly emotional and sensual. The second chakra, yeah, it, it corresponds with sex, but more so it's about sensuality, the things you're, you're touching, feeling, experiencing, tasting, like those types of senses. And so the more you can express that part of yourself and challenge yourself in the ways that you want to keep your expression buried, that is what's going to result in your transformation. Because you're probably going to wake up and realize that you don't, it's not actually that bad. It's not actually that hard. And in this is more of the subconscious. What's supporting you silently in the background? What do you have in your back pocket? Beaver. You know how to build. You, you have this innate knowing of, I know what I need to do. I know what I need to get done. I know how to make it happen. You have the motivation. You have the plan. You have, you know, think about what great engineers beavers are. They really can, um, you know, it's like they're one of the hardest working creatures along with a few others that come to mind. But ultimately, this is about sinking into the work being able to um, just honor the fact that you do have a lot of motivation to get things done and you can make that happen. Okay, so let's see. I do wanna I do wanna clarify the sea serpent just to see a little bit more of the whoops, more of the context. Two of cups. Okay, yeah, a lot of a lot of this has to do with relationships, uh, sensuality, connection, expression, emotional growth, emotional healing. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's the coming up for you. Um, you know, a lot of that divine femininity coming to the surface. Okay, so now I'm going to do the timeline. This is the first quarter, so where you're starting off in May. Queen of Cups, this is about reflection. So you looking at yourself, what is it that you want to cultivate? What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to be? How do you want to feel inside a partnership situation or inside uh, the relationships that really matter to you? It's not necessarily about partnership, but the emotional relationships that you experience. And because you can see how she's kind of looking down at that um, at her reflection in that water. 
okay? And so this is all about, you know, kind of you've taken the time to observe, which is what the crocodile does. And then it's kind of like, okay, I see things clearly. And that that's where the queen of cups is, is that awakening, that revelation. And then you go into nine of swords, not a surprise. This is the fear that piggybacks off of, okay, I think I can do it. And then you clench and it there's fear that comes up. This is okay. This is okay. It's really, you know, it's the ebbs and flows of, you know, being a human being. So people say, oh, mind you, I get complaints all the time that I'm too positive or like I'm too optimistic in my readings. But really, the Nine of Swords isn't, you know, an ideal experience to have, but it's a necessary one. It's like you have to have it. Um, and so it's like I see the value in this in a way that apparently other people don't. Um, so I would just say you can honor the fear because it's there to protect you. It's not there to harm you. It's going to try to hold you back. It will. It's going to try to keep you in this state where you just feel trapped and you're not going to grow and expand. That's what fear is there to do. It's there to protect you, but it may not necessarily serve you. So you don't have to feed into this. It's a perception thing. It is in large part mindset. And sometimes mindset is easier to tackle um, and sometimes it's harder to tackle. So it's going to be a whole spectrum for a lot of you. And the third quarter, the Empress. So this is you feeling more grounded. Um, I am reading this as being a time where you can kind of see things a little bit clearly. And the Empress in this deck, it looks like she has good boundaries. You know, like she has her shield. She it has ownership over her crown. She knows what's going on. Um, I'm going to pull a clarifier for that. And I'm also getting the word compassion coming up. So the six of cups. Uh, communication, owning what it is that you want, owning it. Um, by owning, I mean claiming. So it's kind of like asking for the things that you need, asking for the things that you want. That is ultimately what's going to help you. We have expression as the very thing that you are working towards, the um, outer thing uh, that you're trying to shift into. So just pay attention to that. It's like this is all about you calling in the things that you want, but having compassion like that internal mother for your inner child the six of cups is also the card of children nostalgia and reflection so just you know have uh be gentle with the parts of you that are scared because that's a much younger part of yourself that is really wanting attention you know as we talked about the nine of swords so that's really the remedy here and wrapping up the month, you have the death card. Boom. I love seeing this. I love, love, love seeing this. It's similar to the butterfly. Um, this is you're heading into a new paradigm for yourself. The death card has a really bad rap. Maybe it's, you know, just, you know, the, the fact that I... I just, I really like the death card because it's showing that you are transforming. You are changing, you are growing. And that is the only way that you get the things that you want is if you're changing and if you're pushing yourself. So this is a good thing to see happening because it's like all of this work is paying off. All of the things that you're conscious about what you need to do, all of the reflection, all of the things that you've had to confront and face are serving you. They're resulting in the very thing that you're looking to, um, you know, make happen. So be patient with yourself and be just have compassion for yourself. Seriously. If you're trying and making an effort, I'm not going to say it's easy. I'm not going to say that it's, you know, going to be peaches and cream for the entire month of May. This is about you challenging yourself. And as you do that, it's going to have some really massive payoffs. I'm just putting down the three card pick 
Um, some people like to take all the cards. Um, some people like to pick one before I flip them over. It's totally up to you. I do not care. This reading is for you. So you get to do whatever you want with it. Take what you want and toss out the rest. It is, I'm not, you are not going to hurt my feelings, I promise. Okay. So, let's do the relationship cards first, and then um, I'll do the three card pick. So remember, this is for you if you are in a relationship currently. Wants and needs. I take stock of my relationships and I'm honest about what I want and need from the people in my life. I note the difference between the two. Wants are negotiable, needs are not. Both may be desired and either may be acquired, but that's getting into Venn diagram territory and nobody wants to draw one of those. Um, though some of us might need to. So it's, it's really about taking inventory. Like really pay attention to what is non-negotiable for you. Are you expressing it? Are you asking? Are you communicating? Hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. That's essentially the, the biggest lesson for you this month is expressing that part of yourself. And I promise you there's payoff. Even if it's hard, even if it's scary, there is payoff to you claiming what you need. And if you are not in a relationship, if you're looking, solidarity. I respect the power of solidarity and look for opportunities to unleash it. When a loved one has to do something tough, I heed their often silent but sometimes loud and whiny call and participate in the toughness with them. Everything is easier when a partner cohort sidekick joins you. The only thing that's not easier is feeling resentment, which I suppose is the overall point. Yeah, so this is, again, that compassion piece. And so if you're struggling or feeling really down on yourself, it's like not only, you know, being there, being of service to others, but also having that for yourself. That is the biggest thing with solidarity is just kind of having ownership over, um, you know, the, the way that you treat yourself, that's going to come up big. And that's part of what's going to help you attract the right relationships in your life. Okay, now go ahead. I'm going to move on to the three card pick. I know a lot of you have seen me use this deck. Um, I I got a, a pre-sale copy or a... Um, a copy because one of my friends made this. I'm going to post the link in the description box as I always do with my tarot decks and oracle decks. They're in the description box at the bottom, uh, but I will leave a link if you want to purchase this one. I know a lot of people have been asking that. So um, if you want to get yours, you still can. She was fully funded, so the campaign is still open on Indiegogo. Anyway, card number one, we have alignment. Explore energy first, matter will follow. Find the spine, yours are the one in the situation. Address the source and everything will fall into place. Now, most of the time my experience has been one of these statements stands out more than the other. Okay, so if there's one of these statements that is really ringing as true, then that's the message you need to hear. Um, yeah, so this is about calibrating the internal in order to manifest the external. That's what alignment does for you. Okay, card number two, we have knowledge. Seek understanding. Look beyond your assumptions. Know that your answer already exists. I actually have a lot of resentments <laughs> towards that last statement. I'm like, no, the answer doesn't already exist. That's nonsense. Um, but it's true. I mean, it, it, it definitely is true. Um, so this is also about seeking things out, looking to understand further, coming from a place of curiosity. All of those things are going to support you. And then card number three, we have trust. Ask your guides, act faithfully on their messages. So, right, you can ask, but then if it tells you to take action, you have to do it. Call forth the best in others through your attitude, energy, and expectations. Know that you are supported. This is much easier said than done, especially if you are controlling or if you really want to overpower a situation. 
Um, it, it can be hard to trust. It just is. So this is going to be really great practice for you. And um, I trust that you are going to have a fantastic May. So as usual, all of the links to work with me, if you want a single question, if you want a tarot spread, if you want to work with me one on one, all of that is in the description box. I cannot wait to work with you. Um, and for those of you who are already working with me, I absolutely appreciate you. And I hope you've enjoyed this reading. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter, all of that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.